<laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to Leak Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for the 2012 Halloween special. Thank you for joining me. We're going to have some great wines today, hopefully great wines, for Halloween. As you see, we've got the new set going on. Um, we'll see how it turns out afterwards. Play a little with the lighting. We'll see how it goes. All right. So the first wine we're going to have here is the non-vintage. Uh, it's called the Dia de los Blancos. It is from the South Coast Wine Company uh, down in Temecula, uh, California. That Temecula is in between Los Angeles and San Diego. Uh, this is a blend of, and I forgot to look at it yet again. Uh, I'll have it down here in the lower third, what the blend is, but if I remember correctly, it's Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, and Moscato. So let's go ahead and pour a little bit. This is a rare take two, by the way. Only because I was playing around with the lighting and decided to go with this. All right, so let's check it out. All right, we've got the goblet from last year going. All right, so I'm getting kind of a citrus thing going on. Um, not quite lemon lime, a, you know, but a little bit of that. Maybe, maybe some grapefruit, but the other thing I'm getting is a little bit of melon and cantaloupe. Oops. Yeah, still more of that. Maybe a bit of tropical fruit in there. The citrus is really coming through more of the lemon and lime now. Let's go ahead and check it out. No spitting today. It's pretty tasty actually. Um, I'm getting a little bit of honey to it, a little bit of caramel to it, um, kind of some apple type of stuff. Still some of the citrus, is, the citrus isn't as um, pronounced as uh, it is on the nose, but good amount of, a good amount of acidity to it. My mouth is watering a decent amount, so we're talking about a medium, medium plus, probably medium plus on the acid there. A lot of, a lot of watering in the mouth. Um, for $7.99, which I don't think I've mentioned already, but it should have already been down below. Uh, it's pretty darn good. I was really not expecting much out of this wine. You know, it's very, obviously it's a Halloween wine. And, you know, a lot of times these types of wines aren't really the best. But you know what? It's, it's pretty tasty. I do like it a whole heck of a lot. I think it's as good as most other white wines. This very well could be something that they already sell and they just relabel it. It's a non-vintage. They've had it for a few years from what I can see. So it could be something that they've been rebranded. They maybe have one of their other wines that they rebrand just for Halloween. Because you can't find it on their website, unfortunately. A little strange. However, it has won some awards. If you look at their accolades, you'll find that this wine and their Dia de los uh, Merlot is also listed and they've won some type of gold medal or silver medal or best or best of something. Um, but you can't actually buy the wine off the website. Um, from what I can tell, it's a world market, world market exclusive. So they, they bottle it or they, they label it for world market. So I don't want to be why you can't really find it on their website. Uh, there's also a resort, it looks pretty cool. Uh, they've been around for a while. The guy who founded it uh, started with like 400 acres. Um, was looking for some place to grow some grapes, found it in Temecula of all places, and uh, apparently it's going to make us a pretty good wine for a while. I like it. Pretty good. I do get a kind of a, a little bit of honey type of thing uh, going on. Kind of nice. I don't think I have any bit of honeys in my candy 
my candy thing here. We're going to get to that in a little bit. We're going to pair some of these wines too, just like the Easter special. We're going to pair some of these wines with food. All right. Score wise for the wine, you know what? Let's be, let's, let's be a little serious for a second here. I'll give it an 88. Yeah. No. Screw that. 89. Not quite a 90. 89. It's a good wine. You should buy it. Seriously. You see this wine in World Market, you should buy this wine. It's pretty darn good. All right, so um, I don't have much else to say about this wine in particular because I'm excited about doing some food pairing in a little bit. But let's get through the other two wines. <laughs> All right, you ready for some more wine? I'm ready for some more wine. All right, I know you probably can't see the label very well because it's pretty dark in here. But this is our next wine. This is the 2010 Apothic Red from California. Uh, paid $8.99 at World Market. There's a pattern for me here, isn't there? Uh, this is a blend of Zinfandel, Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot, and Syrah. Uh, I'm not sure the percentages of that, so I mean, you probably can't see it. But this is a wine I've actually been wanting to try on the Halloween episode for quite a while. Uh, just because it's a cool label, Apothic. Uh, apparently the story is, um, I think it was the monks that would have a secret cellar or, or deep cellar called the, the Apothery, where they would store their cool wines, their really good wines, uh, like 800 years ago. Uh, the, the gentleman who uh, started this was looking to make some really special wines. He has Apothic Red and Apothic White. I didn't see the white at World Market. I might have been tempted to buy both of them if I hadn't seen the uh, Dia de los uh, Blancos. But I've uh, been really meaning to try this wine for quite a while. I mean, it's got Zin. It's one of my favorite bridles, so I'm really excited to try this one. Again, it's from California. So the grapes come from anywhere in California. There's no specific AVA in it. Oh, I usually don't do that when I smell on the show, do I? There's some good stuff going on in this wine. I get something I don't typically get with wine. It's in wine a lot, but I, for some reason, don't typically pick it up. I'm getting that coffee and mocha thing. I'm also getting chocolate. I'm getting like chocolate covered strawberries and cherries, you know, so just not chocolate for days, but you get that hint of chocolate. It's almost like a milk chocolate thing. Uh, a little bit of spice to it. Thank you, Zinfandel. No much floral, wood-wise, not a whole lot of wood, but it's there. Just a hint of it. Maybe, yeah, it's coming stronger, coming a little bit stronger. Kind of like a cedar box, cigar box type of thing. Not really the tobacco necessarily, but like, you, you know, the, the cigar box. Nice nose. I really like this one so far. Pretty good. Really get the really get the, the raspberry out of it. Even cherry, like kind of darker cherry, like yeah, like like dark cherry. Really, really nice. And there's something else I'm having a hard time figuring out. But it's there's there's a bit of not creaminess, but a bit of pastry. Like, it's kind of like getting um, a Pop-Tart a little bit, okay? So maybe like a raspberry cherry Pop-Tart. Actually, now that I'm starting to really think about it, I mean, it really makes me think of like a cherry Pop-Tart.
pepper's coming through now, so you get that white pepper, that black pepper type of thing. So some spicing, some spiciness. Um, good acidity, my mouth is watering a lot. Tannins are really kind of medium minus on the tannins. Not heavy, well, now that I say that, my gums are starting to get hit with the tannin. Now I don't know if that's tannin or the alcohol. I think it's only a 13% alcohol wine. I think it's 13.1. I have to remember what the website says. It's too dark in here for me to read all the stuff on the label. Don't want to chip the club, chip the goblet. But it's not like alcohol heavy, but there's a, there's a, almost like a burn on the gum. So it's either, it's, it's either tannin or alcohol. So it's, I'm going to say it's a tad unbalanced, but it's still really good. I mean, this would be a great wine to bring to a Halloween party. Like I said, no spitting today. And I'm starting to get a bit of the wood aspect to it. So again, kind of like biting into a tree, but it's not overpowering. It's just a little bit. Um, again, the pepper, uh, the, ch the, the cherry, and the more, more like the cherry pop tart thing. I don't really get the chocolate and the coffee like I got off the nose. So it was a little disappointing. I would thought it would, it would be kind of nice to get that type of flavor, that mocha or coffee and chocolate and, you know, but it, it switched to more like a, uh, a, like I said, that pop tart type of thing, a little bit of a pastry thing. Um, you know, maybe if I, you know, let it sit out for a little bit, swirl it a little bit. Yeah, so don't get that chocolate or coffee, but you know what? I think it's an excellent wine. Something that you definitely could bring to a Halloween party. It's cheap enough. It's not like really expensive. Um, you could really impress some people with it, especially, you know, just that you're going to be in a good atmosphere. So it's already, you're, the wine's already going to seem better anyway because everyone's going to have a good time. Everyone's in their costumes and they're drinking wine. It's red, it's apothic, it's got a cool label. But outside of that, you know, if I was just reviewing this for a regular show, I'd probably, I know I give the other wine an 89. I'd probably give this like an 88. It's not not like you know one point is really a big that big of a difference, but it's just a little bit. I think it's just the alcohol, just a tiny bit makes it unbalanced, but it's still pretty darn good for eight bucks. Sorry for eight ninety nine. So for nine dollars, pretty good wine. Definitely recommend buying it. If you find it in World Market, and you can find this other places besides World Market. This is one of those wines I have seen outside of World Market. The world market seems to carry this wine a lot, especially during this time of the year. But I've seen it throughout the year. I've always avoided buying it in like, you know, March because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do that for Halloween. So uh, I totally, totally, totally recommend it. I can't do the deep voice the whole time. <laughs> it's just, I just can't, I'll just start laughing. I can't be serious about it. But yeah, and I'm gonna be interested in seeing how this pairs with some of the Candy, uh, that would be so fabulous with some of this chocolate. I think even the Reese's Pieces will go really great with it. The Milk Duds, probably, because I'm missing the chocolate and the taste, so putting the Milk Duds with it might be good. I got a whole bunch of cool stuff in here. We're gonna go over the candy in a minute. So let's move on to the next wine. <laughs> Oh, I cannot wait for this wine. All right, so we're back with wine number three. Now, this wine looked really cool at the store. Um, it's been around for a little bit, but it's the first time I had noticed it. This is uh, Phantom by Bogle. Uh, again, you'll see, you'll have a nice little picture of the, the bottle up here. Uh, 2009, paid $17.99 at World Market for it. Uh, heavy bottle. These, this bottle is heavy. I mean, there's a, you can't hard for you to see, but there's a thick, it's really thick. Um, very heavy bottle. Good Lord, I could work out with this thing. 
uh, like I said, 1799, 2009 vintage. This is a blend of Old Vine Zinfandel, Petite Syrah, and Old Vine Movedra. Cannot wait to try this one. Now, Bogle, for those of you that didn't don't know too much about it, I want to pour a little bit more for me. Bogle was one of the first, uh, pe well, actually, I believe was the first uh, winery that to bring over P uh, Pinot Noir, if I, if I remember my history on Bogle right. No, that was Mirasu, I'm sorry, not Bogle. Mirasu, I was confusing the two, just because there's Bogle as Pinot Noir at where I work, where we had the Bogle Pinot Noir. But anyway, uh, Bogle has been around for a little bit. So let's check it out. I believe it was just a California Appalachian. Got to look to see what it said on here. Yeah, just California. California, eh? Sorry, I didn't mean to become a Texan Grim Reaper. So let's check it out. Gotta be careful with this one. The wine escapes. I'm getting some vanilla off of this. Um, kind of that red fruit pastry thing, almost like a pie thing. Yeah. Even maybe a little blueberry. Getting some blue fruit out of it. So it really kind of, it kind of smells like a blueberry pie. Raspberry, blueberry, blackberry. So all those kinds of type of fruits. You get a pie aspect to it. So, you know, and you get a bit of vanilla to it. Uh, not much on the wood, no floral. Earthiness. Not really, but now I'm starting to get a little bit of pepper. The white pepper, black pepper type of thing. Smells pretty darn good. I'm pretty excited to, uh, to try this thing. Feels a little hot, but I really am getting some awesome flavors to it. The pie aspect still comes through. I feel a little bit of wood. Feel a little bit of the wood, um, but really that vanilla, almost even a coconut thing. Not really coconut so much, but that, that type of sensation. Um, and it really tastes more like, I still just go with the blueberries. Not so much with the raspberry or blackberry, go with the blueberries type of thing. It's really kind of like drinking, you know, some type of blueberry pie. Um, you're getting that vanilla, you're getting that creaminess to it. Uh, it's really good. And the tannins are really starting to hit me a little bit more now. I would call it a medium tannin. I wouldn't go as high as medium plus. Um, but there is some wood aspect. I do feel like a, I'm biting into a tree a little bit. Um, it's not overpowering. Uh, the alcohol does seem to be a little bit too much for me. Acid's pretty good. I'm not, my mouth is watering a little bit. Probably medium plus acid, actually. I don't get so much of the pepper on the palate like I do on the nose. Yeah, because I'm looking for the pepper, I'm starting to see it now. Yeah, a little bit. Little, you know what? I'm getting the Christmas spice thing now, like that little clove and nutmeg type of thing. Not No cinnamon, but clove and nutmeg. This is a darn good wine too. All the wines tonight have been really, really good. And I'd have to say that because 
Now, see, the alcohol doesn't seem like it's so much right now, so maybe maybe after a little bit, it's, it's calming down. Yeah, the alcohol's calmed down a little bit, but it feels like it's a tad too much. I'm gonna knock a point off. I'm gonna give it an 89, not a 90, okay? Whereas the other one, I, I knocked it from an 89 to a 90, 80, 88. If the alcohol hadn't been kind of added to me a little bit too much for my personal taste, I would probably give it an 89. This one, 89. I absolutely recommend buying it. I, besides that the, the, the label's cool. Um, I mean, if you really want to go a little high end at your Halloween party, you want to spend $18 for a bottle of wine, go ahead. This is just a good bottle of wine to have no matter what. But this is a good time of year for this kind of wine. It's hearty. You can have it with stew. You can have it with steak, obviously. Um, this, is, this is a wine that's going to stand up to some really meaty type of things. You can throw some game at it. Um, you know, venison, that type of stuff. You know, oh man, having some venison sausage or meatballs. Man, back in the day, I'm telling you, we had some good venison in the house. Um, I, I could see, I could see pairing it with with that type of stuff. Um, you know, lamb. Oh my goodness, you could probably put a good lamb, a little lamb meatball gyro. My little plug for you guys over there, Max's Wine Dive. They got the lamb gyro meatball. Oh, this would go so well. But yeah, like well, yeah, even like with the uh, tzatziki sauce type of stuff. Man, just a, just a plain gyro. Go to five, uh, five Faces on Division Street in Chicago. Pull a little of this with that. <sighs> Granted, this is going to cost way more than the, than the gyro you're going to get. You can probably get like five gyros. Uh, Yetos, not gyros. Five gyros for the price of this thing. <laughs> Seriously. Probably tastes really good at like four in the morning. I can see pairing some really good food with this. Awesome stuff. All right, I'm just gonna finish this off. Feeling the wood a little more too. Still good. All right, you ready to pair some Halloween candy with all this? I am. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna pair some Halloween food with some wine. Now we're gonna start with a caramel apple. Now this is one of those Affy Tapples, and I really was looking for it. So I bought all the candy at Walmart. Also bought, just, just, just to let you know, I bought this little cauldron here. It was like 18 bucks, I think, 17.99, 17.49, something like that. Um, pretty darn cool, you put just water in it, you don't even get fog and just, it does a little miss and it's kind of cool. I'm hoping it looks pretty good. See, I've got the thing blocked with the wine. I'm hoping it looks pretty good on camera. It looked pretty good when I did the test shot, but um, I'm pretty pleased with it. This is exactly what I wanted to do last year, except I had these little things and uh, I was gonna put dry ice in them, but the dry ice had evaporated because I bought the dry ice like a week before I did the recording. So. We're gonna pair it with first the, um, a little bit, so I have the red wine still in there, with the uh, Dia de los Blancos. I'm just gonna drink it. Again, I don't have a spit bucket to pour the stuff. I'm gonna be, this is gonna go so good. And I, I wanted, and this is why I bought the white wine. So I wanted a caramel apple. All right, so let's try the caramel apple. Not long since I had one of these. Got green apple with some great caramel. By the way, there's no such thing as caramel. Okay, for wondering. I slip up all the time though. I'll say caramel. There we go. We got that great apple flavor going, caramel. Mmm. 
Remember I talked about the bit of honey? Oh my goodness, it is so coming through now. And I think it's because I'm eating this, it's combining with it and getting the honey aspect. My goodness, I'm dead serious. If you can find this wine, you got a world market near you, get a caramel apple or make your own. I was just lazy and it's like making them. You need to get this. Matter of fact, when I'm done, I'm definitely going to have the rest of this with the uh, the rest of this with that bottle of wine. Now, something I also think will go pretty well with this wine is the Reese's Pieces. Got the peanut butter, a little chocolate. Okay. Pour a little more wine while it's running out. Totally. Again, the bit of honey with the peanut butter. Superb combination. Oh my goodness, I'm on, on a roll. Candy corn. Now, as a kid, I didn't really care for candy corn too much because it just had that, there was a texture to it, that sugary texture to it. But I ate it because he ate it at Halloween. It's one of the things I ate at Halloween, but I couldn't eat it anytime, any other time. It's kind of like having peeps at, at um, Easter time. Though I found some Christmas peeps at World Market. I was tempted to buy those. So, because candy corn kind of have like that waxy taste to it. It kind of like tastes like nothing. I guess there is a bit of corn to it. But with the wine, call me crazy, but it's probably gonna taste pretty good. Yeah, not so much. Honestly, it doesn't really enhance anything. Met on that. Let's see what else I got. I got juicy fruits. I'm gonna try some of these real quick. How the heck do you open these things without using your teeth? Because you know the candy's gonna rock the teeth, so you can't use your teeth. Nah, forget it. That's right, kids. Don't try this at home. Matter of fact, you shouldn't be watching this anyway. Like earlier today, when I was doing my class at work, I keep asking, everyone is 21, right? Because you were tasting wine. Juju fruits, I haven't had one of these since I probably was about that high. Tastes just the same. I had the green one, so let's see how it tastes with this. Interesting. Get a real enhancement, since I have the green one, real enhancement of apple. But I also felt like I got a little bit of a pepper thing to it, you know? Try the red one, but the red one would go well with the apothic red. Probably not so much with the wine. With the Blanco. No, not so much. All right. What else we got here? Smarty. I freaking love Smarty. It's probably the last one I'll pair with the white one. Because the rest really is going to be more of a red wine thing. I have a feeling that Smarties aren't going to go very well. But I love Smarties. I can eat those year round. Not so much. Caramel apple, Reese's Pieces, candy corn, juju fruits, the green one, 
All right. The rest, more red, not so much. Smarties, not so much. All right, let's move on to the next one. We don't want to take too long. Put this out of the way. I want to cover up Horatio. Did you catch that one? All right. Let's see, let's do the, the rinse. All right. Woo! Like I said, I do taste the alcohol a little bit on that. All right, so let's dive into some of the other things. Now I got some classic stuff. Hershey's. Move some of the stuff out of the way. Hershey's. My favorite movie candy in the friggin' world, Milk Duds. One of my favorite candies, so I can find it in here. I didn't eat too much of it, thankfully. Kit Kat. Love Kit Kat bars. And I think that was it with the other candy. Some of the other stuff was, uh, oh, Tootsie Rolls. Tootsie Roll, no, we're not going there. But I do love Tootsie Rolls. I love the big Tootsie Rolls, but you know, in Halloween you have to get the minis. So we're gonna try, let me get another Tootsie Roll out because we're gonna have to try it with all the wine here. All right. I can eat Tootsie Rolls, Milk Duds, Kit Kats all day. I like Hershey bars, but I like all this stuff. So. A lot. All right, so let's try, let's try Hershey first. All right, so actually we're gonna try it with the Apothic Red first, and then we'll try it with the other one. So let's open this up a little bit. I hope this isn't too boring. I hope you're like laughing your asses off right now because this dude is in the freaking Grim Reaper costume and talking about candy and wine, Halloween candy and wine. Because you know what? I would be. I'd be like, well, man, this dude's weird. Oh, wait a minute. This is Hershey's with almonds. Ooh, do we have a Hershey, just regular Hershey? No. No, it's no with almonds. Dang it. I should have looked at the package. Cause you know what? When it comes to candy and food in general, I don't like having nuts in my mouth. Okay, I'll eat nuts, as in like almonds, not really almonds, but like peanuts, pistachios, that type of stuff. But I don't like them in my food. But, you know what, it's not horrible. It's like I don't like it at all. But if I had to choose between this and plain Hershey's or peanut M&M's and regular M&M's, regular all the way. All right, so check it out. The almond might actually be good with the one. You know what, Hershey with the almond, Excellent choice. All right, let's move on. Gotta do this quick. Unlike other shows, I have no clue how much time I've used on this, so we're gonna have to go quick. Kit Kat. Freaking love these things. Shouldn't even eat the whole thing. All right, let's try it out. Hmm. You know, the, the, the wafer with the wine, of course, the chocolate. Pretty good. All right, Tootsie Roll. Get one of these real quick. Problem with the next couple candies that are really chewy. Just want to say, don't fear the Reaper, okay? Especially if he brings wine. Nah. I love Tootsie Rolls, but it didn't really go well with the wine. It didn't like do anything, honestly. Because like if the Reaper's bringing wine, he's coming to party not to kill your, kill your butt. Milk thud.
Did you ever feed your dog peanut butter? The same. I never did, just so you know. But I've seen it. Nothing. Good with Hershey's with almonds. Because the, the nutty flavor it goes really well with, with the wine. Kit Kat, the wafer. Very good. Ah, oh, that almost like peanut butter. The other two, not so much. Ooh, Reese's Pieces. Try that. This might go well. Hmm. Thumbs up. All right, next wine. I think I heard a little click, but the light's still on. Trust me, that's a good thing. There shouldn't be any clicks coming from this light over here. I tried to go artsy fartsy with the uh, lighting. I think it's going to come out pretty good. This might be a little too bright, but too late now. Too late now. Oops. You got all stuck there to the caramel. All right, so Phantom. My prediction is the Phantom is going to go well with the same things that the Apothic Red did. Sorry, a little, a little gas there from drinking the wine so fast. My prediction is the Tootsie Roll milk that probably maybe the milk don't go well. We'll see. feeling from this. Ooh. Ooh. Dude. Seriously. This might change my mind and want nuts in my mouth. Oh, I, I said it on purpose. I just had to. With chocolate. Don't go there. Chocolate nuts in my mouth. Okay. Kit Kat. I mean, seriously, it's really good. Hershey's with the almonds. This wine, phenomenal. The other one worked, you know. This wine, and honestly, like with with like I said, the, the tad bit of alcohol. Granted, I've been drinking all the wine, so I'm probably feeling a little bit good right now. But it goes really well. All right, Kit Kat. I have a good feeling about this one too. It's good. I think the Apothic Red goes much better with the wafer. I mean, the Hershey's is phenomenal. Kit Kat, it works. The wafer, I don't really get that enhancement like I did with the Apothic, but uh, it works. All right. Tootsie Roll. Come on. Open up. Now there's a wine that I'm supposed to go to tonight. But I knew if I went there, I would be in no condition to do tonight's show. So, sorry, Ceci, I had to miss that. I really wanted to go. But I was supposed to record this last night, and I didn't. Yeah, really, and not so much on the Tootsie Roll. I mean, that's all right. I think the kind of chocolate the Tootsie Roll is, is just, it's something, something that you just eat. You don't really pair with wine. And finally, the Milk Dud. Interesting. 
really the wine overpowers the milk dud. Weird thing, okay, so like, <clears throat> I'm sitting in the living room right now, and the idea was supposed to have the green screen behind me, but when I had the green screen and it all lit up, it really screwed up the lighting of all this, so I turned it all off. But So now I'm in the dark house right now, okay? So the outside light turns on, which means it turned on because of motion. So there's a little brief little like, oh, who's outside? I'll tell you who it was. It was the neighborhood skunk, probably. I don't know. I just hope it doesn't like spray the cats that are outside. Trust me, I see the skunk usually every couple, usually once every two weeks. But it usually just scurries away. Ooh, interesting. Again, I get, actually I get a little bit of honey off of this one. This actually kind of works. It's not as like a great like pairing that you would think. Um, oh, no, no one's finally. It's not like, you know, it's, it's like awesome, but it seems to work a little bit better than the Apothic Red. And finally, a little peanut butter and chocolate with some wine. Yes, please. All right, so um, I'm feeling pretty good right now. I mean, I'm not drunk or anything, but I'm feeling pretty good. And uh, honestly, I'm just gonna tell you, all the wines are great wines to buy. Um, in all seriousness, some of these pairings with the candy and with the food go really well. Some of them, yeah, not really so much. Uh, I'm not saying you need to raid your kids' uh, Halloween candy and pair it with wine, okay? And you just grab a bottle and swig it. But if you're looking for unusual pairings, if you're you know this time of year, if you're having a Halloween party, you're going to bring some candy, and you want to know well what kind of wine should I bring to pair with the candy or with caramel apples or just apples? Honestly, this this um, De los Blancos with just apples themselves. You're going to bob for apples type of thing. You have a little fun little game with that. It would go really well. Um, I mean, while I, was, I didn't go to the event tonight, I am supposed to go to a Halloween party Saturday, granted after work, which means I won't get over to the person's place until at least one in the morning. But you know what I'm gonna bring? I'm bringing all three of these. Well, oh, I really wanted to have more of that caramel apple with the De Los, with the, uh, De Los Blancos. I may have to buy some of that later this week. Just I, I work the rest of the week. So it's a little difficult to like, not difficult, it's just, you know, not as convenient to buy one of those bottles on the way to work. But you know what? I'm definitely gonna bring at least both the reds, maybe even the white wine. Um, Cause it is a BYOW type of party. Um, so yeah. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope it was entertaining. I hope you liked it. I haven't done a wine review in like a month because I've had all these awesome interviews. Um, I really appreciate any of you that have actually watched the entire Gary Vaynerchuk interview. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. Um, it was a lot of fun. Gary you know, gave up half an hour of his time. He's a busy guy. He's busier than he's ever been in his life. And I so appreciate it. And I've sent apology you know, notes to him and his assistant because I didn't do the, the audio correctly. I mean, this audio is gonna sound awesome as usual, right? Um, but it was one of those things I was, you know, honestly I would say I was starstruck and I forgot to, I forgot to hit the record button. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, I guarantee you I will never forget that again, okay? Um, but you haven't watched the Gary interview, do that. Go back and watch the interview with Sam Scapari from uh, Seraphim Wines. It's an hour and a half. I know it's, it's, it's long. It's three episodes. It was phenomenal. I mean, come on, two dudes just kind of chilling, drinking wine. Incredible show. Uh, James Tidwell, uh, Master Sommelier from uh, Four Seasons in Dallas. Watch that one. And then, of course, who can forget wines and wasps don't mix. Hey, you want to see me like almost scream like a little girl? I didn't quite do it. I was trying to be all manly. If you, if you can call that manly, uh, like running away from a wasp. Um, watch that. And uh, of course, anything else on the site, 
stop by the website. As always, friend me up above. Click the links below. I'm going to have links for all the wines um, below. Uh, hit the donate button. You know what? Value for value. I don't really use this phrase very often. I actually think I've used it at all. Value for value. If you're getting a value off of the podcast or off the web show, stop by the website. Drop a couple ducats. You don't have to drop a lot of money. Drop like five bucks, ten bucks. You can put whatever you want. Uh, you can do a monthly subscription at five dollars a month. I'm not begging for the money. Trust me, I'm not. But you know what? It would be nice to get a little bit from the hundreds of viewers I do get every episode. Stop by. Throw me a dollar or two. Yeah, throw me ten dollars. Buy a bottle of wine for me. Anyway, uh, we're going to wrap it up. I really appreciate it. Stop by the website. Leave comments below. Oh, my goodness. Leave me comments. Did you like this? Uh, This is usually one of my more popular episodes. Uh, So stop by and do that. Next week's episode is going to be something that I recorded after the interview with Sam Scapari, finally putting that review up. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.